the West Highland Way is arguably one of the greatest and finest long distance trails in Scotland, if not the world. And for me, it's held a special place in my heart since I first hiked its 96 miles over 30 years ago. And so, in this short film, I want to revisit my last journey and share with you my experiences and memories of the West Highland Way. I really like the way the West Highland Way starts and that's basically through a country park, Murdoch Country Park, and it just lets you get used to it, you know, it just lets you get used to the pack and get used to the sense that you're on really an incredible journey. The way starts north of Glasgow in the small town of Mulgai, but it's not long before the landscape opens up and reveals something unique, a remnant from the past. Dumgoinch is a basalt volcanic plug and proof of the dynamic landscape that Scotland has to offer. So I'm extremely, extremely pleased to be heading north with Mulgai about five or six miles behind me and about another 10 miles till I reach my campsite, hopefully just before sunset. Looking forward to each and every step. It is awesome to be on the trail again. As you progress north, you encounter Loch Lomond, the largest body of fresh water contained within the island of Great Britain. Inbertsnaid has always held a special place in my heart. First came here when I was 18 with my granddad, who was uh, born in Edinburgh. My granddad wanted to show me his homeland, but Inbertsnaid has a special place in my heart and I wish I could share it with my granddad now because he gave me Scotland. I'm going to get all emotional. But um, for the West Highland Way, this is a, a unique spot. It's about 35 miles in. It's about just over a third of the way. And it really is a magical place. Loch Lomond is nearly 23 miles long and at its widest, five miles. It also contains some 30 or so uninhabited islands, many of them with a deep history, from monasteries to hideaways for those escaping the English authorities. As you progress north, you will encounter a small stone shelter known as a bothy. These shelters were once mostly used by farmers and land workers, and now they're in the hands of the Mountain Bothy Association. These basic shelters offer some respite for walkers wishing to spend one night. They are unique to the British, but mostly Scottish landscape. So this is funny. I saw this uh, lovely little stone bench by this beautiful burn. I thought I'll have a little rest, a wee rest. And then inscribed on the stone bench is the Battle of Darai, 1306. And I got out my guidebook and it said there's a famous battle here with Robert the Bruce and the McGregors. Robert the Bruce is the iconic figurehead of sort of Scottish history, popularised in, of course, the film Braveheart and immortalised on the ramparts of Edinburgh Castle with a stone statue overseeing his land. I don't know enough about the Bruce to, to talk about it on camera factually, but he certainly was an iconic king, future king of Scotland, who gave the English hell I love figures of history that gave the English hell. I may sound English, but um, my grandfather was from Edinburgh, so my ties to this land are more than just for its beauty. My Scottish blood runs through me 
as well as a few single malts of whiskey, but that's another story. Anyway, so it's just funny, you plonk your wee behind on a, on a stone bench and before you know it, you're sitting in a moment of history and literally in the field behind me was one of the most bloodiest battles in Scottish history. Be a strange place to camp, perhaps not. Just a PS to that last piece to camera. It was the clan MacDougall, not McGregor. So I don't want McGregor's leaving comments saying it wasn't me. It was the MacDougalls, the clan MacDougall. Cheeky buggers. As you leave Loch Lomond behind you, the landscape opens up and you're now entering the highlands of Scotland geographically quite a small area of land, but it's renowned the world over, steeped in both human and geological history. Beautiful Inveroran down the path, chuck a right, and then we go over the military road, past Bar Bridge and uh, towards King's House. See how we go today getting too dizzy walking around this can just enjoying a 360 view of my homeland my kindred homeland the word Glencoe seems to ignite a fire in the imagination of people's hearts its mountain tops like Bukaletif Moor stand proud and have inspired both mountaineers painters and poets throughout the generations it's views like this that make the West Highland Way what it is. A magical escape into the wonders of Scotland. But that's what the West Highland Way brings you. It brings you to places on foot that you whiz by in a car and you don't have a chance to breathe and taste and smell. And the reward is also much greater when you've done it on foot, when you know that Every little step has brought you to a place like this. And actually, I think this should be the end of the West Island Way. But it's not. That lies two days head into the town of Fort William. One of the highlights on the journey is the infamously named Devil's Staircase. Its name was given by working men in the 18th century who were crossing from Glencoe into the nearby town of Kinloch Leven. Many of them returning from a night out drinking in the nearby King's House Public Inn. Drunk and disorientated, they would fall foul of the mountain and the name Devil's Staircase was born. Five miles or so short of my end's goal in Fort William. And just being out in the great outdoors is such an invigorating and uplifting experience. As the way neared to its end, there was one more stop that I wanted to check out, the little known Dundeerdale Fort. Built in the Iron Age, this place had so much intrigue and mystery for me that I made a separate film on my channel, just to explore it and do justice to the story. Not sure um, if you can see this, but behind me, that is the Ben Nevis Massif, part of an ancient volcanic plug. I wish I had the energy, but I ain't going up there. I've been up there many times and I'm running out of time. Tomorrow, I need to head back to Edinburgh. But, ah, uh, oh, I'm gonna say I've made it. But that final, final made it is just in a high street next to a man-made plaque. But for me, this is the end of the West Highland Way with the mighty bend behind me. As I entered the town of Fort William, the mountain capital of Scotland, there was more sadness than joy. This walk had meant more to me than an end destination. It had captured my imagination some 30 years ago, and yet that thirst was still not yet complete. I once had a dream 
that my whole life was spent walking the West Highland Way. And sometimes a dream is a window in what you truly desire. And I guess for me, the West Highland Way is just one of those things. On the date of this video being released, it's two weeks till I go back to Scotland to create four new bespoke adventures. I hope that you can follow them by subscribing to my channel. And please don't forget to hashtag adventure travel filmmaking.